DaVinci Resolve 19.1 just came out and I think they fixed the most annoying thing that any old school Avid or Premiere editor that likes to edit from one timeline to another timeline has had. It sure has been an issue for me. And that's how do you control where your video is going or how do you control how many audio tracks you're sending over. What I'm talking about today is underneath the timeline menu, there's an option that's called Swap Timeline and Source Viewer. I've taught about this for years now, and essentially what this lets you do is if you have a creative timeline, let's load my creative timeline, calling it Robot Kid 1112 Demo, and I want to take footage from another timeline, maybe it's an entire day's worth of footage, maybe it's just selects that you've cut up and put on a timeline. The way that used to always work is you would just drag to load this over to your viewer, and then you can use your command that you have set for swap timeline and source viewer. I personally have this set to the tilde key because there's no page up button on this editor's keyboard from Blackmagic, go figure. Uh, but set this to whatever you want it to be. It could be like F1 or something, but I'm just gonna hit the tilde key to swap between those two. And I have a quick access to go between one timeline and it's just basically it's flopping this left source monitor and the right record or timeline monitor back and forth so I can take and pull from one to the other. But what I couldn't do before is control where they went. Now you can, and it's incredible. So if I go to my source sequence here, so this one you can see this is like five hours of footage. Um, I don't want to watch all of that. And maybe you have a, you're used to hearing or working with the, um, the source tape and the cut page. This is like that, but you can control what's on it really easily and include audio only, which you can't do with source tape. So let's pick a small segment here. Let's say we want this section here. There's some audio. If I mark an in and I mark an out, you can see I have one video track, four audio tracks. And if I look over here, I can see I have metadata about what these audio tracks are. This is a Braxton Love, an Ashley Love, and then these looks like they're probably just from the, the camera themselves. So let's say, what if I wanted to take this video clip that's on video one, and I want to take the audio that's only from the Braxton Love that's on A1, but I want to put it somewhere else. Let's say, let's put it on V3 and, and A3 on the other timeline. Well, here's all you have to do. I'm gonna hit my swap timeline and source button. And I have that set to tilde, command page up to the default, set it to whatever you want it to be. And then over here on this timeline, this is my creative edit, right? You can tell that because it, it actually has music on it, so it must be creative. And if I go down over here, all I need to do is patch these in and it will actually take them now. So the orange box, those are our patches. Those are our destination select buttons. And so all I need to do is just choose the, where I want this to go. And if you click in on these like you normally would, they're not really doing anything right now, except you can turn them on and off, which means it would take it or not take it. So if it's orange, it will take that video. If it's grayed out, it won't. But you can also right click on these now. So if I wanted to right click on V4 and send the video to V4, I right click on it and I say, I want video one to go to video four on this track. I'll make this a little taller so you can actually see what I'm referring to. So. Video four is the fourth one, fourth tallest one. Let's say I want this to go to video three, like I mentioned, I right click on there and we can have video one going to there. And the same thing down here at the bottom. So I already sort of pre-patched this as I was practicing, but I have right clicked here to say that my A1 is going to A3. Let me expand this. I'm holding shift to make your tracks taller. It's a nice thing to do. But if you wanted to go to A4, uh, instead you could right click and say, I want A1 to go to A4 and it would take it. So let's let's move this back up. You can also click and drag. If you just drag and release it on there, that's another way to do it. To insert it, it's easy. You just use your three-point editing controls. F9 is your insert command, and what that does is where the playhead is, it's gonna place it there and push everything else down based off these auto track selectors. So I'm hitting F9, and there you go. So it just placed the video exactly where I wanted it with the right audio track from my selects timeline. So. It's a great way to, to really quickly move through a lot of stuff and control your placement as you go. Oh, and the other really cool thing about the swap timeline source workflow about working from one timeline to the other is that match frame works as long as you have that sequence loaded in the viewer. Let me show you that real quick. So I still have my selects sequence for this day three loaded in my viewer. If I go toggle back over to it, you can see I'm on this random frame here at like hour one minute 40. But if I want to match frame back to this shot that I had pulled from there, and I hit F for match frame, or it's this button right over here, match frame just calls up that exact frame on that sequence. Watch this. 
See, it just loaded it straight over there and it jumped exactly, it knew where that came from. So if I hit my swap timeline source button, it took me to that clip on the timeline, which is really, really, really cool. Oh, and why is that really, really, really cool? Because a lot of times when you're using a select sequence, you might need to go and find another take that happened around that same time. So if you have a whole bunch of takes lined up from different shots, you can quickly navigate on that source sequence to a moment that happened a little bit before or after for finishing your creative edit out. And now there's an option where you can just swipe here. So if I just wanted to paste something up to video track four, I could just swipe, select, deselect those. And the same thing happens with all these others. So this is the function I wanna show you. You can swipe to select and deselect. You don't have to manually click them or manually turn them all on and off. A nice swipe does all of those. Let's say I wanted to paste something up to video track four. I could take a, a segment of B-roll over here copy that command C. So if I hit command V, now it pastes it up there based off of, you can see video four was selected. If I didn't have video four selected and I had video three selected instead, it goes to V3. But this has always been there. I just want you to know that now you can swipe and swiping is awesome. The third thing I really love about 19.1 is it's so much easier to swap out your audio channels like your microphones right on the timeline. You used to have to select the clip, go to clip attributes, you could right click on it, say clip attributes, go to your audio tab, and then you could choose another channel from here. Now all you need to do is hold down command, probably control on Windows machine with a right click and I can choose a different mic. So if I wanted to choose the Rode Braxton microphone here instead, Robotics to me is my I could listen to that and check that out if I wanted to right click and choose the Chadwick AVX mic. Robotics to me is I can just listen to all these different options without really doing anything other than holding command or control, right clicking and then choosing the microphone that I want to hear. And the other nice thing that they've added here is I've I've raised a stink about this before, but it actually updates right away that the cache or whatever when it tells me the microphone name, it's there. You don't have to like go to another page and come back. My fourth favorite thing that's not a big deal to most people, but it might be to you because it is to me, is that you can batch select all your timelines in a bin. And this is something they actually added a while ago. You could right click and say timelines and then say add to render queue using any sort of preset that you like to use over here. But that's not the thing, okay? That's what people are showing for some reason. But that really cool thing is that you can go over here and say export DaVinci Resolve timeline files or any of these interchange EDL XML type formats and batch them all at once. So if I wanted to export like a backup of every timeline that's in a certain bin, I can say DaVinci Resolve timeline files that makes a DRT file, send this to the desktop because that's what you do in tutorials. And as soon as I do that, it just kicks out all the DRT files, which are basically all the metadata, the important time stamped work of all everything that's down here into these little tiny files called .drt files, right? This is like the resolve specific XML. And this also works, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip here. This also works if I wanted to take one of these, let's find this exact timeline. I'm going timeline, find timeline in media pool. If I export this as a OTIO file, so we'll just choose the top version right there. And I change this to OTIO file and we'll send it to the desktop. If you have markers on your timeline, there's a really cool app, and this month I wanna be featuring all kinds of cool apps that go along with DaVinci Resolve, and that's called um, Creator's Best Friend. And what Creator's Best Friend does, it's a Mac app, is it lets you take an OTIO file with markers on it and load it up, and that will give you chapter markers that you can load into YouTube so that it creates those automatic chapter generated markers. It's one of the ways that I've started to use lately and hopefully that helps you find stuff in my tutorials. The fifth amazing thing they fixed in Resolve 19.1 is you don't have to automatically create tracks from multi-track source audio. Maybe it's multi-track source video. You control how many tracks in your timeline when you're doing three-point editing. So that's controlled under the edit menu down at the very bottom, edit options, and deselect the option for automatically create tracks on edits. So if that deselected, I have a four tracks of audio, I'm able to just choose which mic I want. So if the inspector over here, you can sort of preview these. This is kind of new and nice to have. You can choose the lav, I want the boom. Let's say I want the boom. All you do is in the track header area over here where it says A1, I wanna take the fourth channel because the boom's on four over here. I will right click on the A1 word, choose A4. 
now when I do a three point edit or I do this method where you can drag from the source over here to the timeline viewer, it'll just take that fourth channel and it won't take the rest of that audio with it. If you wanted to change it like I did earlier on in this video, it's a simple thing. You can command right click on it and say, oh, I want the lob instead. Hey, I'm Chadwick. If you're new here, I really do appreciate you. Even though I say that every week, I actually really do. And I love Resolve. So because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.